I've got it. Let me get it.
at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing, praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Thank you, Jesus. In the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, give me Jesus. Give me 
You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears go gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. mother's womb you've chosen me love has called my name I've been born again to my family your blood flows through my veins I'm no longer a slave child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. No longer a slave to fear. I am a child I am a 
child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Lord's Day. This We are in the Lord's house. The Lord's word is going to be read and proclaimed to you today. God bless you for joining us wherever you are this morning. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God, is what Peter said when questioned by Jesus. Who do you say that I am? Peter made the good confession, the confession that brings peace to those who uh, whose lives are founded on the gospel of grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And that is our hope that you would receive that peace as well, that you would make that good confession of yourself, of who Jesus is in your life. God bless you today. Let's uh, open our worship with a word of prayer, and then we'll begin our liturgy this morning. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you are good to us we have gathered together to make our confession of you, to speak out loud with our hearts and our lips just who you are. And who you are makes a difference in who we are. And so, Lord, we pray that your word would have great course in our lives today, that hearers would hear it, receive it, and with great joy live it. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. And God's people say, amen. amen. So let's begin our liturgy this morning, dear friends of Christ, remembering the words spoke, spoken over all of us in our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever, amen. Let us confess our sins together. Almighty God, merciful Father, we humbly implore your mercy and ask for your forgiveness. Our lives have not reflected the confession of our lips, and we have failed to marvel at the depth of the riches and wisdom of the knowledge of God. Instead of trusting you, we have relied on our own understanding we have thought too highly of ourselves instead of presenting ourselves as offerings in gratefulness for your mercy. Hear and forgive us for Jesus' sake and fill us with the Holy Spirit that we may seek nothing but to know your will and the strength to carry it out. Dear friends, I have good news for you. God has heard your confession and grant you full and free forgiveness because Jesus died and rose again for you. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, do I declare the forgiveness of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, Grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may boldly confess him to be the Christ and steadfastly walk in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Chains are gone, 
soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be forever Morning. Good morning. Thank you. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 51, starting at verse 1. It says, Listen to me, you who pursue righteous, righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him that I might bless him and multiply him. For the Lord comforts Zion. He comforts all, all her waste places and makes her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her. Thanksgiving and the voice of song. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out for me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples, the coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look to the earth beneath, for the heavens vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner." But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory Glory to to you, O Lord. Lord. Now when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. At this time, I'd like to invite the children um, to get a little closer to the screen and take a look at our felt board today, because I'm going to read to you um, from our epistle lesson today, which we didn't get to. Um, And I wanted to explain it, because I, I think it has a powerful message for us, because it talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We talk about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and sometimes we don't understand what the Holy Spirit does or is in our life. And so I tried to create a board today that would reflect that, because we're going to start 
with the Holy Spirit today, right? So the Holy Spirit, right? In Romans 12, which is our appointed uh, epistle lesson, it says, having gifts, the Holy Spirit gives us gifts. And all of these gifts are on the board today. And he says, gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. So I read that and I was struck. I was like, God gives us gifts, and he says, use them, put them to use. But what are those gifts? So the first one here, it says, if prophecy in proportion to your faith, right? Prophecy, right? This is a very tricky thing. And so what I wanted to picture here is foresight, right? Foresight of maybe something that you see down the road that needs to be done to glorify God. Maybe there's a need that needs to be met, met, right? That's prophecy. Maybe you have that gift, right? And then it says, if service in serving. And so we have service. And then I have this picture here, all these uh, wrenches and nuts and bolts, right? Working together. All of us probably have some portion of this gift to put uh, our hands and feet to work in serving someone else, right? That's a gift of the Holy Spirit. And then it goes on to say, right, the one who teaches in his teaching, teaches. And this right here is take a picture taken from a couple years ago from our Sunday school, and we have a teacher, Carrie Ann, sorry to put you out there, but right, she's teaching our Sunday school a Bible lesson and, and a craft. She's putting her gifts to work. So if you have the gift of teaching, put it to work. And then it says, the one who exhorts in his exhortation. Now I struggled with this one because we don't use this word in our everyday language. So I put exhort here. And you can see here, you have two people encouraging two turtles to keep on keeping on. Right? That's what exhort means. It means to explain, but it also means to encourage. Maybe you have that gift to encourage someone. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit. And then it goes on to say, the one who contributes in generosity. And so we have here contributes, and we, here, right here, we have a basket full of food and groceries. And we've done this here at the church a lot when we've gathered things like diapers or food or, or, or monies, and we've given it away to people in need. Maybe you have that gift. And, and, and God says, do it in generosity, right? That means joy. That means happiness. That means don't do it like, oh, i got to give someone something. No, he says do it with, with a, a glad heart. That's what that is. So maybe you have that gift. And then it goes on to say, um, the one who leads with zeal. Now, not everyone is a big-time leader. We all know this. But you see right here, we have this person right here is leading a whole bunch of people. And so if you're ever put in a, in a position of leadership, do it like you mean it. Don't quit on it. God says, do it with zeal. That means do it with, like, I'm going to use another word you don't know, gusto. Do it with passion, right? Do it because it's a good thing from God. And then the Bible says, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Now, I don't know if you can see this picture that well, but there's someone right here um, bending down to give a few extra cents um, to someone who's maybe homeless. That's an act of mercy. You know why? Because she did not walk by him. She did not just leave him. She stopped to pay attention to him. And maybe there's someone in your life who uh, needs to be paid attention to. That's an act of mercy, isn't it? Because that's what Jesus did. He showed us mercy. And so these are some just some of the gifts of the Spirit. Now, we started with the Holy Spirit who gave us these gifts. 
Now, why did he do that? To point people to Jesus. Because that's what all of these do. They point people to Jesus. Prophecy, service, teaching, exhorting, contributing, leading, and showing mercy. We want to do it to lead people to Jesus because he is the giver of the greatest gift, which is eternal life. Because he died for us and he rose for us. And he showed us so many great things that we need for our life, especially today. And so I, I pray that you guys would uh, consider your life and maybe what gifts you have or what gifts you're developing because now is a great time to, to try and put them to good use. So can I close this in prayer? So Heavenly Father, thank you for sending us your Holy Spirit and your Son that gives us great gifts, gifts that, gifts that bless other people. Help us to use those gifts in mighty ways to lead people to you, Lord Jesus. We pray this in your name. Amen.
am a child of God. Yes, I am. Well, God's grace and peace and mercy to you from God our Father, from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, may the words that I speak, the words of my mouth, the meditations, the thoughts of all of us be wholly acceptable and pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So Jesus poses uh, the greatest question ever asked. He says, who do you say that I am? It's the greatest question ever asked because it's a question asked to you. Jesus is asking you, who do you say that I am? You know, that question has been answered millions and billions of times throughout the history of the world, and, and uh, great answers have been given. I just think about all the answers I've ever heard to that question, who is Jesus to you? I've heard, you know, the, the rote, standard sort of Pavlovian responses to that, like a little bell going off as someone asks you, who do you say Jesus is? And, and you might say, my Lord and my Savior Great answer, because he is those things. I've heard sort of more sort of formal theological quest or answers to that. He is the Son of God. He is the Christ. He is the Messiah in the Old Testament, the Mashiach. He is the Word of God in the flesh. He is God incarnate. I've heard sort of less formal answers that Jesus is my buddy. He is my friend. He is my brother. He is my homeboy. I've heard answers like that. Great answers as well. I've heard practical answers. I've, I've heard uh, people say that Jesus is uh, my coach. He's my counselor. He is my teacher. He is my co-pilot. Although the only one in our church who could say my co-pilot would probably be Vince Merton. The rest of you would say he sits in my hay baler with me. But they're all great answers, right? Jesus is those things. I've heard the practical answers. I've heard some very emotional answers. I've heard some of you say that Jesus is my rock and my fortress, my ever-present help when I'm in trouble. He is my comforter. He is my best friend. He is my life. He is my song. He is my everything. All of these are great answers to the question, who is Jesus? And who is he to you? But it is a, uh, not an easy question. It is not an easy question because um, Jesus isn't asking what everybody else is saying. He isn't asking about the answers that others have given. He is asking you, who do you say that I am? And you have heard answers your whole life. You've heard people like me give you answers of who is Jesus. And I, I might have shared some of those answers on that list, and others may have shared. You may have heard who Jesus is from a pastor, a Sunday school teacher, um, your parents, a friend, someone in this church. You may have heard uh, about who Jesus is on television. You may have read it in a book, although I don't know who reads books anymore. You may have read it on Facebook, a post, who is Jesus, right? Because who reads books anymore? Facebook is the only book around. But, but who is Jesus? Jesus isn't asking, what are you reading on Facebook? He isn't asking, what has Pastor told you? Or what has Jim told you? Or what has Carrie Ann told you? He is asking, who do you say that I am? It is a difficult question because it isn't just a quiz. It isn't just a multiple choice question. It isn't a confirmation exam. It isn't an easy question to answer because it, it's a question that can't just be answered in words. It has, it's a question that needs to be lived. It's a question that is answered in the, in the context of your life. And it's a question that gets answered by you today. Who is Jesus 
to you. Who is Jesus this very day with whatever it is that you're facing this day? Who is Jesus when a loved one dies? Who is Jesus to you when the doctor calls with bad news? Who is Jesus to you when your life feels like it's falling apart? Who is Jesus to you when you have very difficult decisions to make with no easy answers? Who is Jesus to you when the night is dark and the storms are brewing and you don't know what to do? Who is Jesus to you? It is not an easy question. It is a quite difficult question. It is also a question that is very much posed to the church, to us collectively, to St. Paul's in the context of this crazy world in which we live. Who is Jesus to us as believers, as the collective body of Christ? Who is Jesus to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in this pandemic? in this world where so many people are hunkered and bunkered down and they they don't know what to do. They don't know what the future holds. Who is Jesus to us? How, How are we answering that collectively? How are we living that collectively? Who is Jesus to us in the wake of George Floyd's death and the incredible racial tension that continues to to burn in our country? Who is Jesus to us? Who is Jesus in in our community? Who is Jesus to us in in a community like the one in which we live, where there is so much um, sort of social social and economic disparity, where there is the haves and the haves-nots, and where there are people with plenty, and yet there are people going to bed hungry? Who is Jesus to us? It can't just be answered with very simple sort of formulaic words. This is a confession, an answer that has, it has to be lived. And I would tell you, um, this is the greatest question ever asked, because it is asked to you. Jesus says, who do you say that I am in this world in which I'm placing you? Now, your, a- your answer matters. It matters in this world in which we live. And because it's, the reason it matters is it's because it's, it is foundational. It is foundational to who you are and who you will be in this world in which God has placed you. So if you look at this text, Jesus wasn't concerned about what everybody else was saying, although he asked it, what, what other people saying? But when he says, when he turns to his disciples, he says, what about you? Who do you say that I am? And one of them answered, and a lot of people like focus on Peter. Peter seems to answer. He's not shy. He, he, he jumps up and answers, probably before he thought about it too much. And he gave that great confession, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. But what I would tell you today is that was his answer. It was a good answer, a great answer. He was saying, and essentially, you're the one we've been waiting for. You're the one we're looking for. You're the one we're ready to put our faith in. You're the one we're ready to lay down our nets for. You're the one we'll follow anywhere. You're the son of the living God. The God who lives with us, walks with us. When when Peter made his confession, when, when Peter said, this is how I see you, it was really foundational for Peter And I I say this a couple of reasons textually first. Two things happen. Um, One is he gets a new name. He gets a whole new identity. Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for this wasn't revealed to you by a man, but rather your Father in heaven. You are Peter. Jesus gives him a new name. Like we get a new name in our baptism. You are Peter. Peter means rock. Jesus says, on this 
Uh, so Jesus said Petros, and on this Petra, so it's not the same, Pet it's not the same Peter. He says, on this, what you said, your answer to me, how you answered my question, who do you say that I am? I will build. I will build my church. It really is the birth of the church, but it's more personal than just this edifice of St. Paul's. It's, it's really talking about the living temple that would Peter's whole life would become. Peter, I give you a new name. You are now Peter. The old is gone, the new has come. And on, on what you have said, on your confession, on who you say that I am, I will build my living temple in you. I will build upon that. And I just think about Peter throughout the scriptures and what we know about him. Peter doubted and he denied. He flubbed, he fled, he sank, he slept, he sinned. He didn't seem to understand any of the parables that we've been talking about the last uh, several weeks here at St. Paul's. Uh, if you read this text a little, little further, and we'll talk about it next week, he argues with Jesus and his intentions, and Jesus has to say to him, get behind me, Satan. When Jesus needed him the most, he slept. Someone recently confessed to me that sometimes they sleep during the live stream. You know who you are, so please stay awake. Right? Sleeping is not a good idea during the live stream. But here's the thing. Through all of those life experiences, through the ups and downs, through the successes and the failures, Pete, Jesus said to Peter, you are a rock. Not, a, not, not the foundational rock. The foundation is Jesus and the teaching of the apostles. But, but Peter's also this rock that gets shaped and molded and through the, through the uh, tumbling and through the environment and through the experiences of life, he becomes that rock, that beautiful rock upon which Jesus is building. So Peter's uh, life changed dramatically through just answering that question, not just with simple words, but recentering his life on the foundation of who Jesus is in his life. And my friends, you can do the same. You're, you're not a whole lot different from Peter. You doubt and you deny. You flub and you flee. You sink and you sleep and you sin. But Jesus has asked you, who do you say that I am? And you have an answer. Whoever he is for you today, let that be foundational. Let that sustain you through all the trials and troubles and heartaches and challenges that we face in this world and you face personally. I want to encourage you to live the answer to this question. To live it. To discover the rockness that Jesus knows you to be. To live the answer. To live with hope in the midst of despair. To love your neighbor, even though they're not lovable. To care for the poor. To feed the hungry. To defend and uphold and encourage the oppressed. To offer forgiveness, even when you don't want to. To pray, even when you're too busy. To love your enemies, even though you fear to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow, even when the gates of hell seem like they're being opened in front of you, you know that you will prevail because of who Jesus is. So I can't answer the question for you. I can't and I won't. Because the foundation for you is answering for yourself and living the question that Jesus puts to you today. Who do you say that I am? Let us pray. Lord, do we thank you that you would come to us with such a question that is not easy to answer nor safe 
it calls us to, uh, to oceans, calls us out upon the waters, calls us to live in ways that we haven't lived before, to speak in ways that we haven't spoken, to trust, to build our lives on the foundation of your grace and your peace. But you ask, and so we answer. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now that we have heard the word of God read and proclaimed for us, dear friends, uh, let's speak together words of our common faith. We will confess and say yes using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God bless you. Let's continue to worship him as we gather wherever we are through uh, virtual giving, giving online, mailing your checks, just giving with a cheerful heart whatever you have to give either this day or to whatever cause builds up this, uh, this Jesus in the world in which we live. I encourage uh, your continued generosity for the sake of lifting up Jesus. We gather our offerings and our hearts to him now.
Jesus of my Savior, Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders, let me walk upon the waters, wherever you would call me, take me deeper than my Let's turn our hearts and minds to the Lord's gift of prayer, praying for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for people everywhere according to their needs. Let me share with you, God's people, what has been offered to us in terms of prayer requests. We have a prayer of thanksgiving uh, for Drake. This is Sandra Falk's grandson, Sandy Falk's grandson, as he recovers from lung damage due to allergies, asthma, and mold. We pray and thanksgiving for Rana Ferris's return home. Praise and thanksgiving as she recovers from her hip surgery. We pray for healing mercies for Albert Abaso, Barb Yates' daughter-in-law's uh, grandfather, as he recovers from kidney surgery. We pray for those who are impacted by COVID-19, especially Mercedes, a friend of Jean Espinoza, Randy Gray, a friend of Terry Jones. We pray for healing mercies, continued healing mercies for Cece Fergonias and her battle with leukemia, for George Fradel, for his battle with late stage liver cancer, for Mercedes ben Benuelas and Tony, her husband Tony, as Mercedes battles cancer. We continue to pray by for all who are impacted by Corona-19, for the protection of our law enforcement officers here and throughout the nation, for peace across our nation, for the Great Commission uh, to be uh, ongoing throughout the world that many, many more would be able to answer the question, who is Jesus? for California wildfire victims and first responders. And then I, I almost missed this, a late uh, addition here for our sister Tanya Milan, who is undergoing thyroid surgery on Monday. And I'm sure there are other requests on your hearts or minds. We encourage you to offer them to the Lord in your own heart, uh, but also to let us know how we can pray for you and with you Either go to our website or contact uh, uh, any of the staff or Laura Goodsell, and we would be honored to pray for you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, uh, your grace and mercy is abundant and new every day. We thank you for this day, even in the midst of trials, even as the waters uh, roar and foam, we know that you are our fortress and ever-present help. We thank you that you are constantly with us and that when you ask us uh, through your son Jesus, who do you say that I am, that our answer brings us comfort, our answer brings us confidence, our answer instills in us courage to face whatever it is that we're facing because of you. So we do pray for your healing for those who seek it. We do pray for peace where there is none. We do pray for resolution of conflict. We do pray for protection for those who feel endangered. We pray for the poor, for the underserved, for the hungry, for the oppressed. We ask you that your name um, would be 
known that people who follow you would live the answer to the question and bring healing and mercy um, throughout our land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you've heard the specific requests by name of people that we love and know. We thank you for your healing mercies for those who celebrate ongoing recoveries. We pray specifically that you would continue to strengthen them for each new day of healing and therapy. We pray for those who battle difficult diseases and uncertainties, especially those battling COVID-19 and cancer and surgeries. We pray for those that we now mention before you in the quiet of our heart that are unknown perhaps only to us and to you. We lift them before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for your church on earth. Let us be the rock which is answered clearly in the world today, the question of who you are, and confessed it boldly to a world that needs to hear who you are in the world today. Give us courage to confess. Give us opportunities to speak it. Give uh, open ears to those who hear it. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayers. These prayers, Lord, and all of our prayers we bring to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. I believe in the sun, I believe in the risen one, I believe I overcome by the power of his blood, amen.
because he lives. Amen. Amen. Let my soul join the one who never ends. Amen. Hope and pray that you were encouraged today by God's Word and His praises. I have one announcement. Uh, I want to say that uh, starting this Wednesday and for the next five weeks, um, we're going to be dropping some videos on our YouTube page, St. Paul's Holtville. And I want to say they're puppet videos. Jake Thompson and his family um, came here and we created um, the best that we could some puppet videos that were uh, very encouraging. And so, real life puppets. And, and we did it. And so, Jake and Christian and Layla, thank you so very much uh, for your help in that. So that's every Wednesday for the next five weeks. Um, we're going to be dropping a new video on our YouTube page. And, and Kim is going to help us figure out how to get, make sure everyone has access to that. So, um, they're intended for children, but everyone is welcome to, uh, to watch as well. They're short, they're not very long, but we wanted to uh, encourage you in a certain way uh, in your journey of faith. Pastor Mike, did you have anything? All I want to say is Jesus loves you, and so do we. God's people, let's go in peace wherever we are, and let's serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.